Well, Haley, let's talk about cyanotype prints. Yes. And it all sounds like just crazy talk, really. Cyanotype, yeah. C-Y- Not many people have heard of this. Right. C-Y-A-N-O type prints. And it's a photographic process. Right. It's very old, like 170 years old. Right. I didn't actually realize that I've known about cyanotype prints since I was a kid and, you know, did it as a kid with my mom. Had no idea that they were that old and had no idea the history of them, which is so interesting. Like blueprints. That's right. where the term blueprint comes from because cyanotypes are a monochromatic blue and white photographic process. And one of the very first uses for the cyanotype process, because it was so cheap and so easy, was to either copy notes or to make copies of schematic drawings, which we now call blueprints. Even though we don't even use the same process anymore, right? we still have hung on to that classic blue and white image. Right. So basically, they would just draw out the image or the print on some sort of relatively transparent paper. Right. And then they lay that over paper that is treated with the proper chemicals to create this cyanotype. Yep. And then they expose it to the sun. And the sun goes through the transparent parts of the paper. It's yep. blocked by the opaque lines. And the opaque lines show up as white lines. And everything that's exposed to the sun on the final print right. is all a really, really vivid Prussian blue, I think it's called. Yeah. They're beautiful. And you can make really interesting images with them. Another one of the very first um, uses for this type of photographic process was categorizing and cataloging seaweed. Algae, yes. yes. Anna Atkins, uh, the very basically. very first female photographer. First female photographer because she used this process. Right. And yeah, she took seaweed, algae, the book. She's got three volumes of it. It's called British Algae. <laughs> And it's fascinating, but it's beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. She'd lay whatever she found on treated paper or whatever, expose it to the sun, rinse it out. You get this really classic blue with the white wherever the algae was laid or whatever. And yeah, she's got this whole book that she makes out of these. It was the very first book of photographs, actually, which, you know, is really cool. Really cool. Super fun. And Haley sent us off on a mission, my family, with... Mm-hmm. cyanotype fabric. Yes, pre-treated you know, fabric. Pre-treated fabric, ready to make all kinds of amazing things. I was really excited for you guys because I had done this on my vacation recently with my mom. And like I said, I had done these as a kid. And it had probably been, it's been since then that how, I've... How did this even happen? I mean, how did your mom stumble into this? I guess it's an old process, so it's not like it was hidden. They make hidden. sun I just kits. never heard of it. Yeah, I think that's actually the brand is Sun Kit. And it's really, you know, small square pieces of paper that come in a pack that are maybe $5. They're super inexpensive. And they used to sell these in places like Michael's or, you know, craft stores. Mm -hmm. But I can't find them anymore. I think you can purely find them online at this point. But she had probably been searching around for something easy and fun to do with me. Something to keep you busy. Yes, exactly. And so, yeah, I remember we spent an afternoon where we laid out this paper in the yard. You know, beforehand we had collected some things like flowers and leaves and things like that. And we had laid all this stuff out on the paper in the sun, Mm -hmm. left it for maybe 15 minutes or so or until the paper turns this kind of... Um, like bronzy gray type color. That's how you know it's done. It's fully cooked. And you take it inside, rinse it out in cold water, and And then then you're left. instantly it turns blue. Yeah. You throw it in the cold water, and the blue comes instantly through. Pro tip. Oh, pro tip. Yeah. I haven't told you about this yet. If you add a little bit of um, peroxide to the solution, it'll actually make the whites even brighter. Oh, really? Like instantly. And you get a deeper blue. Well, so, I, as somebody who injures himself on a regular basis, have an abundant supply of peroxide. <laughs> so that would have been good Perfect. to know, Haley. <laughs> so I'm going to get whiter whites. Yes, whiter whites and bluer blues if you add a little bit of peroxide. But anyways, yeah, I had done that as a kid and remembered it. Haven't done it since then, really. But I was reintroduced to the process when I took that class at Oxbow in Saugatuck. We've talked about that on the show before. 
and we were making stationery that day and we were using this process and I was surprised even there how many people had never heard of this process well, before. Well, that, that is interesting because you're at uh, you know, an a artist mecca, art. right? Yeah. <laughs> and you were saying there were people there who... Were artists, you know, there for a residency who were printmakers even that had not heard of this process before, had not done it. And so we invited them to join us. But it's just, it's so satisfying. It's so inexpensive. And so I did this on vacation with my mom. You snagged some pieces or exactly. parts or whatever you needed. And, and you had a good experience reliving your childhood I did. with your mom. Yes. We collected some things on the hikes that we went on and then spent an afternoon making these prints. And I, I don't know, it served two purposes. We were doing an activity together, but we were also collecting things from our vacation to make these prints with and then have something that will last forever to hang on our walls. So well, that was our experience as well. Like we said, you sent us with a packet. We had fabric, mm-hmm. treated fabric. So primo Even stuff. Even cooler, yeah. yeah. Haley really dropped the big bucks on us. <laughs> and we went out there. And my daughter, Hannah, especially, you know, this is right up her alley. She loves this kind of thing. And she was very excited to go walking in the woods, find different, you know, examples of things that she could press and then put on the paper and exposed to the sun and get who knows what from it. And I remember um, the first few days that we went on the walk, Hannah was, of course, too tired. She had played too hard at other she parts of the day. Yeah, yeah, she wanted to rest. <laughs> and so we all went, and we were supposed to collect stuff for her. But <laughs> that kind of feels like servanthood. She was sourcing out her yeah. collection. <laughs> yeah, her art. <laughs> she has other people do it. Other people do that. Yeah, that's Anyway, true. we did. We gathered some stuff, but... When Hannah got that, she realized she wanted to go get her own. So she yeah. goes out one of the days. She saves up her energy, gets out there. First thing she grabs is something that one of the kids tells her is poison ivy. Oh and that almost gosh. derailed the entire thing because Hannah gets, well, there's a bit of a drama queen in Hannah. She gets it from me. <laughs> <laughs> she has an instant reaction that she holds on to for a long time. Yeah. So she was very worried for a very long time that she was now covered in poison ivy. Oh, my gosh. Once we got over that, though, she collected fern fronds and all kinds of Queen Anne's lace and all kinds of different samples of stuff. Then we get back, and now she's really excited to do this. So she breaks the stuff out of its little light light, sealed bag. Right, right. It comes in special protective bags. She breaks out her piece, puts it on the ground. She's got instructions from Haley that it's supposed to be done at noon. Right. Did you tell her noon? Yes, I told her Thank noon you. because the sun has to be high in the sky so you don't get shadows. Yes. So Hannah tells me, Haley said we do this at noon. And I, I said, well, it's 1140. It's noon. You know, that's that's basically noon. She says, somebody Google what noon is. And then <laughs> turns out Google says that noon is noon, you know, 12. 12 and we had o'clock. to wait. And I said, but Hannah, she said, but Haley said, now you know how I stand. That is awesome. How you stand in in their work in their in their ideas. Anyway, finally it gets to be close enough to noon for uh-huh. Hannah to actually let me do this. And we put the piece down. She puts her palm frond on it or not fern palm frond, frond fern yeah. frond on there, and gets amazing results. Exposes it for about fifteen minutes to the sun. Then we take it in. It bronzes, like you said. Mm-hmm. We take it into the trailer, rinse it all off, and she's got this beautiful print. It's yeah. amazing that she produced this. And then instantly she's off and running. Oh, yeah. I because can... it's such instant gratification. I mean, these take 15 minutes and you have a print that looks like it was done by a professional, right? That's the thing that was so fun about this is seeing how good the piece was when it was done. You know, and she was able to get amazing stuff. It didn't look cheap. It didn't look like something that right. a little kid did. Hers looked better than mine. Which is disappointing, you know. <laughs> I thought I was going to nail it. And, you know, but the, the the really cool thing is just that it was so inexpensive that even when I didn't nail it. It's okay. It really didn't matter to me all that much. Right. Well, I think that's why, I don't know. It's not why I love it so much, but it's one of the reasons that it's so cool is that it does lend itself to experimentation. Because you're not making this giant investment in like these crazy professional art supplies and this really long process that's extremely skilled. Like there's so much investment when it's that level. But with this, it's a $20 investment and it takes 15 minutes and you can be anyone, any skill level, 
And like you said, kids are probably going to be better at this than adults. <laughs> Why? Why are they going to be better? I think because they're more open. I can beat most children. What? Yeah. I'm open. New ideas. I'm always asking for new no, ideas. You do right? have a lot of ideas with this. And I'm excited to talk about all of your ideas because it really... Oh, you're not been, joking? No, I'm not joking. Oh, I thought that was a setup. <laughs> Nice. Oh, I, I was not expecting that. I'm so not used to that. <laughs> okay, keep being nice. <laughs> Tell me more about my well, new ideas. You've interrupted no, my, the I flow have... of consciousness. <laughs> I want to be critical again. <laughs> <laughs> I do have ideas. And yes. I think that I, I want to put a pause on this because I, I think we, we don't have time to keep going. On the other side of the break, let's talk about some of those ideas because there's an entirely other side of this that we haven't even talked right. about yet. That will open it up even further. All right? Yes. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking more about cyanotype prints and why you need to be doing this right now. ASAP. <laughs> it's commanded to you by the Repcolite Home Improvement Show. We'll tell you more about that in just a minute. Stay tuned. And we're back. And Haley, we're talking about cyanotype prints. C-Y-A-N-O-T-Y-P-E. Prints. Wow. I think I got that right, yes. didn't I? Yes, <laughs> I think so. I was going through it in my head. Yep. Yep, you nailed it. Yeah, nailed it. So go and if you if you didn't catch last segment, you know, we tried to explain it. It's it's a printing process, a photographic printing process. Yes. Basically, you're making your own photographs to some extent mm -hmm. using found items that you just lay on top of pre-treated, specially treated paper. or fabric. Right, or fabric or whatever. Expose it to the sun and then rinse it clean after about 15 minutes of exposure, and you end up with this blue and white image. It's monochromatic. They're really beautiful. You know, a, a blueprint doesn't do it justice when you hear those words. So I really highly encourage everyone to look online, figure out what we're talking about, or tune into the YouTube version of the show so you can see the visuals. But yeah, it's a it's very cool process. Really cool process. The thing we really like most about it is that it's so accessible. You know, we tried to yes. get across some of that in the last segment, and I don't know if we did or not, but I want to recap that my kids have had so much fun with this really, really cheap packet. You know, basically $20 mm -hmm. to get 10 sheets of pre treated paper, and there's way cheaper ways to go yet. Yes, there are. And they've had so much fun coming up with ways to create art by laying different pieces on this. Okay, do we lay this fern frond on there? What about this fern frond that we've got? That's hard to say fast. Fern frond. Fern frond. Yeah, this fern frond that we've got that has kind of curled and gotten all crispy. You know, all the pictures that you see online are fern fronds that are really nice and pristine and, and flat. flat. Right. Yeah, they look beautiful. Well, we have a little shriveled one. <laughs> <laughs> and Hannah wanted to toss that out and go get a pristine one. Right. And I said, no, after a lifetime of being the person not chosen for whatever team. Oh, wow. Choose the shriveled one. Choose you know, maybe the underdog. It will be cool. And so we laid this little shriveled fern frond on the paper, exposed it, and... It's I amazing. think it's the coolest one out of the bunch. I'm holding it up for the people on YouTube. Yep, she's got it upside down. She's got it right side up. <laughs> Why is it cool for the radio people? For the radio people, like we said, the ones that are flat and laid on the paper are very crisp images. It's a very stark white print with the dark blue background. The curled one, because it's lifted off the paper in certain areas, it creates lighter blues in the midst of all that yeah. dark blue and white. So now you have a true monochromatic rather than just pure white and pure blue. You've got a dynamic image. It almost has some movement to it now right. too. So I think it's more interesting to look at. It's really, really cool. And we did that in 15 minutes. And it's right. something we could put on our wall. It's that cool. So let's talk about what other people, you know, people out there in Radio Land. Radio what Land. can they do with this stuff? And what, what, what do we recommend? Let's start with the pre-treated papers and stuff. Pre-treated paper and fabric. I mean, you've got a variation of sizes, but any size can be framed, right? So this is a really inexpensive way to make really high-end looking art for your walls. I mean, on a budget, this is a great DIY project. Really great. And yeah, we did that on the vacation. And now we've got, you know, I love this because the kids all, I think all kids, are all about souvenirs. Yes. And As an adult, I am all about souvenirs. Oh, you are. See, yes. once it became my coin that was uh -huh. buying the souvenirs, now I start gauging the quality of the souvenirs. 
<laughs> These are all junky things. Yeah. I'm not going to throw money at them, and I don't want them in the house. You know, I've got standards. You do this, have standards. This turned out to be something perfect. Mm -hmm. It looks great. It's a memory. It's a whole process, you know, and a whole right. experience. It was an experience, that's yeah. That's recorded in this that they will remember forever because we remember the poison ivy freak out <laughs> we will always remember that every time we see this fern frond on the wall we'll remember the freak out about poison ivy how perfect is that that's hilarious and we had frames at home you know i happen to have eight by ten a whole bunch of cheap plastic frames that were oh, used sure. for another something else in the house before i had as high a standard as i do now mm. but i was able to paint those up we use sticks uh, from insulex it's a primer Bonds to everything. We've talked about it on the show before, but you can put it on backsplash tile or whatever. I mean, it yeah, bonds to everything. Whatever. And I put that on the plastic frames because normally paint does not paint, want to stick yeah, to plastic. Yeah, paint bond to that. Painted them up. Now I've got you know these great frames. I've repurposed them, or I'm not really repurposed them, but I've brought them back to life. I've yes. resurrected them. Yes. That's even better than repurposing. I think so. But anyway, we've got vacation memories and stuff like that. And that's just doing one thing with them, you know, making right. prints out of them. You talked about at the beginning making stationery out of them. Right, yeah. And with this, I'd almost recommend going to a different process that we haven't discussed yet. But you could use just the paper that you get pre-treated, 8 by 10 or smaller. You know, there are different sizes. You could make envelopes even. You know, mm -hmm. you can fold your own envelopes and make envelopes out of this too. So Paper airplanes. <laughs> Origami, <laughs> origami, like a could goose. Be cool. I wonder what it would look like if you'd fold the origami first, oh, and, and then, then put it outside. And that's what's really cool about this is there's so many what ifs. I wonder ifs. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's so inexpensive. You can buy a pack of fifty little pre-treated papers yes. and just kind of test some processes. You can do that for nineteen bucks, fourteen bucks in some cases. Well, it's so intuitive at that level too. Like when you lay this paper down. I don't know. You talked about how when Hannah started making this stuff, you could like see her thought process as she started laying, you know, the fern down or she grabbed the butterfly net and just the experimentation and like automatic inspiration of the process because it's so easy. It's so accessible, so quick that you can make mistakes and not feel bad about it or self-conscious, you know, opens all of that up because she was watching. Yeah, I was telling Haley about that, you know, before we even went on air, right when we got back from vacation about how Hannah would test things. And she does exactly what Haley said on the first one. And then already on the very second one, yeah. she's adjusting based on what she's seeing. Really, really cool. So if you're going to get those papers, we'd recommend that just to try the process. Right, exactly. Now you can brainstorm and you can test things and see what it will do. And you'll produce lots of really cool, really fun stuff. It's great yeah. for kids, anybody, anybody. If you're going to do that, one of the things, I really the only supplies you need would be the pre-treated paper. And then also sometimes they recommend plexiglass or glass, mm -hmm. you know, a piece that will lay on top of the items that you place. Yeah, if it's any kind of breeze place. and you have a light, you know fern frond on top of the paper it's yep. gonna move a little so this will keep it nice and flat right if you're looking for that really crisp right. image you need that i didn't like that i liked the fact that our little fern frond was bending and twisting in no, the breeze I agree. I and we got a little a cool bit of look. motion on the on the actual image when it was done so right. let's talk about something even cooler so yeah. that's the pre-treated stuff what about when you can you can buy the chemicals themselves yes it's a two-part mix yeah, it's just like a two-part solution. You mix together equal parts, and you know you want to wear gloves when you do this. They are chemicals. Don't drink it. <laughs> Don't drink no. it. No, it might look like that yellow Gatorade color, but it's not Gatorade. Right, it's actually poisonous. <laughs> Don't want to mess with that. So be careful. Don't yes. use it around kids or leave it in the hands of kids. Use a disposable, you know, Solo cup or something. Mix it in there, and then really you just need like a chip brush that we would sell at Repcole. You know, normally we'd recommend those for sample pints because they're so inexpensive or even the little foam brushes. Mm -hmm. But you would paint the solution onto a piece of paper, clothing, fabric, anything that'll absorb the solution essentially. You let it dry and you have to make sure you're doing all of this in a dark room because this is light sensitive solution. As soon as you start exposing it to light, it's gonna turn into an image that's stable 
and you're not going to be able to put anything on that piece of paper and so get an image still. The first trick is painting in the dark. Yes. You paint by feel. <laughs> <laughs> but once you got that down, think how often you can use that. No, you'd probably want to use a red light bulb yes. or something like that, like yes. they would in a dark room. Exactly. You can get that. That's really easy. Get it painted. Let it dry in a dark space. Mm -hmm. Leave it in a dark space until you're ready to use it. Yep. Then you break it out, and who knows what you could do. There's all kinds of things. We were brainstorming. Haley, you mentioned clothing and stuff like that. Yeah. Like a lampshade. Yeah, we were <laughs> talking about this, and right next to me in the studio, there's a fabric lampshade. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I could paint that with cyanotype solution and make a print on there. You could do it with pillowcases, you know, a, a light blanket, curtains. You could make your own rug. Y you were talking about painting it on a drop cloth material. Yeah, I thought about buying. We have great big drop cloths in the stores. We've got five by five drop drop cloths, canvas ones. We've got four by fifteen foot runners, canvas runners. And I thought that would be really cool because mm -hmm. that little kit that we talked about in the beginning, you know, there's all kinds of different sizes. But one particular one that I spotted was enough to do, I think it was 60, 60. 8 by 10 pieces of paper. Right. So you can do a, a fair amount of area for $24 is what that costs. So for 24 bucks, I could cover my 4 by 15 drop cloth or a good it's part really of that cool. and really create... You know, large scale art. Large scale art. Yeah, really, really cool stuff. And if I tested it on my papers and stuff like that on the, the really inexpensive mm -hmm. media, man, I, I'm going to know what I'm doing and really bring that to this bigger piece. Well, we've talked about in a previous segment all the uses for drop cloths. And I think we talked about how you could make a tablecloth out of a drop cloth or, or a, runner. a runner for your floor hallway with a drop cloth. You know, there are so many inexpensive uses. Or I guess there are so many uses for this inexpensive process. It's kind of limitless. I, it really is. And, uh, you know, I really don't know how to wrap it up. I guess the wrap up is just to say it's so inexpensive. It's so accessible. You don't, you know, we can go to Art Prize or, you know, you see great art and you see what people have accomplished and you think it's really great. You'll love it. But it's not something I can do. At least that's how I look at it a lot yeah. of times. And I don't know that it loses some interest for me, but it doesn't suck me in because it's just so out there. It's not something I can ever attain. So I'm well, amazed. You can't relate to it as much. Maybe yeah. that's what it boils down to. But when I saw this and I get my brain moving on it, that I can produce something almost as cool as what I've seen at Art Prize. Sure. And I can do it. I can right. do it with the stuff I've got at home. I don't need special no. training or anything. Just you don't a need little... a special studio. It's just about being creative, about asking questions. You know, I'm thinking about putting it on some paper, putting some pieces on it, and then seeing if I can move that. Or maybe putting it out on a cloudy day right. where the exposure is slower. Exactly. And maybe I can move it and actually track movement or see what happens with that. What do the shadows do as I move this piece around? I don't know what's going to happen. I just well, think, I think it's really interesting to ask. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, Art Prize and seeing things there and thinking I could never do that. And that's one of the things that I find so depressing about the way that art is taught in schools potentially, because I do think that people leave school just as kids thinking, I'm not an artist. I'm not good at drawing, you know, right. and that's what defines being an artist is whether you're good at drawing or not. And that's how many times haven't you heard somebody say, well, I can't even draw a stick figure. So or I'm not I can't even draw a straight line. Right. <laughs> and yet that doesn't have to be it at all. No. I mean, it does not take someone that can draw to place an object on a piece of paper and you're still making art. That's the same thing. You know, found object art is just taking an object and putting it in a different context on top of a pedestal. You're still an artist. You don't need to have any drawing skills at all. So don't let that define what you can do creatively. This is for everyone. Yeah, it's really cool. Definitely check it out. We're going to put links in the show notes. Like we said, super easy, any age. The results Still are going to be them. great no matter yeah. who does it. And Haley's already told us that the kids are going to beat the grownups at it, right? <laughs> yes. All right. I don't know if that's so, but it's certainly possible. All right. We're going to take a break. When we're back, we're going to be talking about paint, but we're also, more importantly, more excitingly, mm -hmm. excitedly. It could more, be. Oh. It's I was exciting. really building to a really good, <laughs> and I just <laughs> fell straight on my face. Even We're more exciting. We're giving away $1,500 in prizes, so you're going to want to hang out. Well, we're going to start the, the contest. Yeah. Okay. We're not giving them away today. No, not we're today. We're going to tell you how you can win, and that's all next. Stay tuned.